Hi everyone, welcome back to another SOLIDWORKS tutorial. A friend asked if I could show how to draw the smoke box support brackets that attach to the frame, and I thought that would be a good idea. We'll be looking specifically at Denver and Rio Grande 315. He gave me a few dimensions to start with so I can draw it approximately the right size for his purpose, and from there I'll be using photographs to approximate the geometry. So for photographs, we'll be using the Denver Public Library. They have an incredible digital photograph collection. They have hundreds, if not thousands, of photographs of locomotives from railroads all over the USA and from a broad range of time periods. If you're not familiar with this collection, it's definitely worth a look. There will be a link in the description below. So let's find some good photographs of 315. The collection is very consistent with how it names its photographs. So once you get accustomed to how things are named, it's pretty easy to search for what you want. So we have a good side view here. That might be helpful. Open that in a new tab. I'd like to try to get something that's fairly straight on from the front. This one might work. So we want to model this support bracket here. So we've got a round flange, three rivets, probably a piece of pipe. It comes down to a flat piece. Let's see if there's, if we can see it better on this photograph. Yeah, hard to see, but it comes down and joins with this flat piece that bolts down onto the frame rails. So this wraps around this way and then kind of a, almost an S shape, really subtle S shape. And then on this from the side view, we can see it's probably roughly at a 45 degree angle. Looks like our disc here is slightly below center line of the smoke box. I think these photographs will work, so let's get to it. I'll start a new file in SolidWorks. Got a few dimensions to start from. This is a, a for a two and a half inch scale model. He said his smoke box is 11 inches in diameter. So we'll just start with the smoke box. This is the outside diameter of the smoke box. And we'll draw another line outside that. This is going to form that disc on the side. This piece doesn't look too thick, but I would guess that eighth inch would get us pretty close on the model. We'll draw just one side on the right side of the locomotive. We don't need to draw both at the same time. We only need half of this circle to start. Let's just cut this in half. I'm going to use my power trim to just quickly delete all these entities that we don't need. Now we have half a circle, so now we'll extrude this. We'll just go inch and a half for now. I think our circle will be smaller than that. I almost always do mid-plane for stuff like this rather than doing a direction one and a direction two. Now we'll rotate this to the side view and we'll cut out where the disc needs to be. It does appear to be a little bit below center. Let's go one and a quarter inch for our diameter. maybe half inch below center. So now we're gonna do an extruded cut um, and then I flip side to cut. And this flip side to cut will make it so that it cuts everything except for the circle that we made. So now we're left with this little plate that will be the piece that attaches to the side of the smoke box. So now we need to draw another plane. So we have our location of this now we need to create two fixed points that we can use those as a starting and ending point to decide how we're going to lay out the rod. We're going to need to make an offset plane that represents the top of the frame rails. From his measurements, it looks like it's about uh, 6 and 5 eighths from the center line of the boiler, 6 and 5 eighths from there. And we'll flip offset because we want it below. And we'll just make this bigger so that it's a little bit more user friendly. So now we'll draw our rectangular bit down on the plane, since this now represents the top of the um, frame rails, where this is going to come down and connect to. He said the outside of his frame rails are six and a quarter apart. So I'm gonna go six and a quarter divided by two, since we're only doing half. Uh, I'm just gonna guess that his frame is probably three quarter inches thick. We're gonna have to guess how far the distance is from this center line to where it meets here, that lateral distance. So let's say it's five inches. And then we'll make this, I don't know, one and three quarters. Looks like it might work out all right. We'll make this one three sixteenths. 
So now we have our, the position of where it's going to land on the frame. Now, we have to decide where our pipe is going to terminate on here. So I'm just going to draw a little construction line from midpoint. So this, this point here is where we're going to connect our pipe to. That's going to be the center line of where it where the pipe attaches to this rectangular piece. And we can modify this later if it doesn't quite look right. We can change the location of that. So now it appears from the side angle that it's straight. It doesn't appear to be arcing this way or this way. It looks like it's just kind of a straight shot. Uh, that makes it a little easy for us. We don't have to do a 3D sketch or anything. We can just draw a plane and draw the path that we want our pipe to take. So I'm gonna create a new plane. I'm going to turn on view temporary axes. So I want this plane to go through the center line of our disc here. And then I also want it to intersect with the point that our pipe's gonna come down into. So that gives us a plane on which to draw our, our pipe here. Our pipe's gonna snake around this way and then come down. And from some other pictures I look at, it doesn't look like it comes in perpendicular, just kind of bends in and kind of attaches at an angle. It might S-curve a little bit down, but it, it does come in at a, at a bit of an angle. So again, I like to just throw the lines on there that I know I'm gonna need. Not worry about whether or not they're correct. Put on the relations that I need, because I, I know all these curves are gonna need to be tangent to each other and to these lines. I purposefully drew this at an angle, since I know it's going to come in at an angle. If I drew it straight down, it would automatically throw in this vertical relation, which I don't want. So I'd have to go back and delete it, and then swing it out. It's easier to just draw it at an angle if you know it's going to be at an angle. Uh, this line is going to intersect with this point. So by doing this, now it goes through that point. I do want this to be offset a little bit from here. We actually want to put a sweep in here. This might look strange, but this will actually wind up looking pretty good. So it's gonna be something like this. I'm just gonna drag everything, get it approximately where I think it needs to be, and then I'll go back and um, actually dimension this stuff out. It's gonna be something like that. Make this one and a quarter. So um, what I'm about to do is I'm gonna make a sketch point if I put a sketch point on here that I want to use, and then I go into the sketch that I'm working on, it's going to disappear because it's a it's an earlier sketch point. I'm going to roll this back and then put on my sketch point. It's going to be on the front plane. We're just going to put it midpoint with this outside edge. So that's going to be my reference for how far offset our line is. And this this line is representing the center line of the pipe. So we'll grab that point. We'll use that sketch point as our reference for what we want this offset to be. We're probably going to make this a 3 8 diameter tube. I want this radius to start pretty far down because the wall is going to be outside and this terminates roughly in the middle based on the photograph. You can see where it ends. It's roughly in the middle of that circle. Let's draw a circle, a construction circle, just to help us visualize where this is actually going to terminate. So if this is going to be 3 eighths, this is the radius of the pipe. So half of 3 eighths is 3 sixteenths, which is 0.1875. So even that might be a little bit high. So right around there, that's going to terminate approximately in the middle of that flange. We should probably put a dimension here. So it's going to go straight for a quarter inch leading up to that. So I'm completely making up these dimensions. I'm just kind of doing what I think looks about right. The main goal here is just to show the process of how to draw this. I think this angle looks a little too shallow. Something like this. I'd like to define that by the angle. So I'm gonna put a construction line. And then I can define this based on this angle. Let's call it 20 degrees. I think this will work. Let's put a dimension here just so that it's defined. I do want this to stick out past a little bit. Let's go one inch. Just so that that's defined. Okay, so let's extrude this and see how it looks. We're gonna do a sweep for this. And there's a really nice feature in the sweep to swept boss base. If you click the circular profile, it will just take that and uh, turn it into a, a round feature. So I think we want this to be probably 
seven sixteenths would be my guess, which is 0.375. Okay, we're close. We'll delete these faces. Delete face. This one needs to be cut. So we'll draw our sketch. Just throw some lines on there, as usual. And we'll make it long enough that we don't have to worry about it not getting everything. Through all. Um, so this doesn't look quite right. It's close. This is this is sticking out too far. So we can go back and uh, change this offset, bring this in tighter. So we went with 7 sixteenths for the diameter. So we want our offset to definitely be less than half of that, I would say. Um, so let's go 0.2, see how that looks. I think we can make our radius a little bit bigger. So we're just looking to see that this construction line roughly intersects the middle there. That looks a lot better. And we do want this to come out a little bit first, how it swings out, because usually on these locomotives, the smoke box front does stick out about half an inch past the smoke box diameter. It has to clear that lip. Let's see how this looks down here. I don't really have a good picture of how this really looks where it connects but I think this is probably pretty close let's actually move this back a little bit more so I'm going to edit this sketch this little construction line that we made we'll move this closer to the edge I think that will work better and we're just going to throw a bunch of fillets on here I'm going to make this as big as SolidWorks will let me Yeah, there's two bolts that bolt this this square part onto the frame right here. Maybe 3 16 on a model to bolt it down onto the frame. If you go to draw this, you know, you can you can put in the numbers that make sense for your model. Going to cut through there. And then up here, we also need to put in some fillets see how eighth inch looks I think that'll be good let's throw a fillet on here okay and then from our right plane we can make and draw a, a quick circle pattern I don't think this is going to be exactly a perfect circle or you know evenly spaced circle pattern let's draw a construction line I want this hole to be in line with the axis of our of our rod so I'm drawing this construction line from center and I'm going to make that, well, we'll make it parallel. That should work. Go around and make them all equal. And we'll draw construction lines again, connecting these to center. Let's draw a circle to represent our diameter, the diameter of our circle pattern. And make sure that these smaller circles are connected to this larger circle. Let's decide what we want our diameter to be. That looks appropriate. And then we'll put in an angle here. Maybe 105. So if it was a perfectly spaced three-hole pattern circle, this, this would be 120 degrees. We're a little short of that. 110 might be all right. Because this is uneven, this is the only reason I'm not doing just a plain circular pattern. If it was just a plain circular pattern, I would just cut in one hole and then and then pattern it. Now extrude this all the way through, or just through all. So now there's our hole pattern. Let's see, so it doesn't look quite right. These probably need to be a little bit bigger. Let's make this for um, 5 sixteenths clearance hole. Since that's bigger, I'll bring these a little further away from the, from the fillet. So let's tighten up our circle diameter a little bit. I think that pretty much does it. So now to make the other side, all we have to do is mirror it. So I'm going to choose the right plane. And then we want to mirror 
the body. And when you're mirroring bodies, if merge solids is selected, SolidWorks is going to try to merge the two bodies together. And if they're not touching, it can't do that, and you'll get an error. So uncheck merge solids. And we need to pick the body. I'm mirroring this. And there you have it. I think these are pretty close representation. I think maybe I think maybe this doesn't come down so far. Might be a little bit more like this. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. So it may not be exactly perfect, but this is as close as I can get it just looking at photographs. It's a starting point. If you have any questions about what I've done here, ask away in the comments and I'll answer as best as I can. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.